What's up, everyone? Welcome back, basketball fans. I mean, KBF finals have just been nothing but a KPA show. Like, KPA continue their dominance in the KBA finals. The KPA women's side defend the women's basketball title, are going back to back after sweeping the ZTEC Sparks and continue their reign. I mean, this is just uh, pretty awesome to see. In the men's finals, the Dockers hold a 2 1 series lead with game four set for Saturday today. So the Kenya Ports Authority ladies are the 2022-2023 Kenya Basketball Federation champions for a record 17th time after closing out the final series with a 68-43 game three victory over the ZTEC Sparks at the KP Makandam Gymnasium. So this game they defeated home court and they completed a sweep, especially considering the fact that the took care of business in Nairobi, and they beat, utterly demolished the ZTEC Sparks, and I can even say destroyed them in a very one-sided game one and game two. Games were even decided the fourth, so it, it is what it is. So winning the championship, this there is one, but finishing the entire postseason unbeaten adds on to their reign. So the Dockers ultimately winning it all for the fifth consecutive year. I mean, KPA have just been awesome. Um, they they have shown that they are just cut are cut above the rest of the women's division, especially considering the fact that they've racked so much experience. I mentioned even pre- in previous videos that KPA not only do they dominate in the regular season, but also in the playoffs, as well as even I'm not saying they dominate, but they also participate in zone five competitions. They also had the Africa Women's Cup. They had, you know, their key acquisitions in the season. They had Ifunanyo Koro coming into the squad. Okay, they lost Medina to Z-Tech. And it was so much, it was so much uh, that went through this season, but they're able to, like, make sure to be able to get the job done on both ends of the floor, and especially having depth in that roster and having a lot of uh, players who can actually play well so there are no uh, there are nothing there was nothing that was going to be able to stop them at this point in time so mid-season acquisition if Okoro we look back or to what has been a tremendous season for her and the entire team as she once again proved to be the difference with the game high 27 points in that game so she was uh, she was awesome she was hoping Hilda and Darcy another new face on the team this season was the only double digit scorer for the team but but um Natalie Akini also she scored thirteen with a with a food win some fourteen points, seven assists and six steals performance. Uh I mean Hilary and Darcy play play well. Fourteen, seven and six. Natalie's thirteen points. I mean KP are just running on all cylinders. So Valerie Kimunto was Zitex only double digit score with 13 points as KPA emerged victors in almost every statistical category, utterly dismantling the Zitex box. Be it rebounds 42 39, assists 13 11, field goals made 21 17, and floor percentages uh, 39 29. So KPA were just on that level, man. The home side coming off two wins on the road, Trill Ali in the counter as they stumbled into a 16A deficit before they crawled back in the second period, winning 11 and 6 and only trailed by three points going onto the break. So I'm just quoting directly from Mozart Sport, and I mean, this just get, gets, gives you some context on what really, what, what really happened in that game. So the third quarter was all the different, well, was all different for KPS. They won 19 and 9, for wrapping up with a 13 and 2. Uh, scoring in the fourth and now they are back to back champions so the thing that is actually uh not that surprising was the fact that kpa swept the ztex box i knew it from the onset especially when i watched game one and game two i just knew this series was over and especially considering the fact that they're going to play at home there was no way they're going to lose and even if you look at the scoring you could see K- kpa just continue the main the scoring production was just the same game one there was 68 points they scored 
uh, game two seventy, game three sixty eight. Game one and game two, Zetek were held to thirty eight points, and in this game at least they scored. It's called 43. So this was a funny, it was actually pretty funny to watch, funny to see. And looking at the way KP had been playing, I just knew this series was just going to be over. I don't think that uh, ZTech had the ability to get back, especially considering the fact as much as we want to praise Coach Obi, he has, he has done so much for this team, for the ZTech Sparks team. But one thing that I've seen as his Achilles heel is how to play in those those biggest stages, like on a on a on even looking back at when I started following Coach Obi in the twenty twenty one postseason with the ZTech uh, Sparks, the the team that is in Div One right now in the in the NBA, they really balled out, especially in the regular season and playoffs. But it came to the finals. You could see. He just need, knew, didn't know how to adjust, and they lost to the Dream Girls uh, in four games. And you could see game one and game two, they got beat by the Dream Girls team that you might not even think that they were able to like even match up with the Xbox. They beat them twice. In game three, they only were able to steal game three, and they lost game four, and they eventually lost the championship. So when I saw that, I just felt, you know, I just gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it was the first season of the Xbox being there, it's just like you know them just being there for the for that first time maybe it's just a one off thing but when i watched last year's postseason they got the, through the first round easily but when they entered the second round they got swept by equity the equity hawks so i was like was with this this is the same coach as coaching that team that that uh, that team in Devon and Zetek in the premier league so when i saw that i was like seriously damn i mean you're supposed to be able to like you know make those adjustments and be able to find a way to beat a team three times uh which he didn't at the time and i just you know just said let me just brush this off maybe this is a premier league it's different this year's postseason there's actually a bit of improvement because they're able to make the finals but even looking at the, even the game that uh kpa played with uh, the ZTX Parks near to the re- end of the regular season, you could see it's like gave me a lot of confidence in in how ZTEC were playing, especially among, especially with the big teams. But looking at the way uh, that game panned out, you could see it was game. It was, the game was very close to the end, and it was just you know easy going. But when game one and game two of the NBA Finals kicked off, a uh, game one especially kicked off. It was actually a massacre. I saw a massacre, and Zetek had just had no answer. They were just being picked up defensively. They were not even to be able to get those shots up. And right from the bat, when I just saw the score in game one, I just knew game two is just going to be another massacre. And if it continued, uh, game three would be no different. And it has proved that. So I think it just put an asterisk on that coach. Because as much as you're very good at, you know, uh, putting grooming players and making sure that they play basketball. I don't think the coach is intelligent enough to know what sets to run and how to coach a team in the biggest stage. So that's actually one of his biggest undoing. And on the KPA side, yeah, it's fun after the fact. I've seen them, they've won. I've seen them win back to back. They've been dominant. But the real test is what will they do in zone five and what will they do in the Africa Women's Cup, it, the cup if it happens, because in Zone Five you can see they have a, had a good run, but when they match up against a Sporting, they just get thrashed. And some of those players play in the national team. I'm not going to get into that because I already talked about that in the vid- in another video when when those games happen. But I will talk about it. But when I look at KPA, they're just a cut above and they're on another level. This is not their competition, honestly. Uh, ZTEC are supposed to be competing with other teams, but KP is supposed to be competing in continental basketball. As much as we have uh, people, you know, coming in and, you know, praising a lot of KPA, I'm not saying I'm not praising KPA. I'm just saying this is just not their level of competition. I'm just saying these are this is a team that is supposed to be looking towards competing in continental basketball, which is something that has been their biggest undoing. They have not been able to compete in continental basketball 
at that level because every time they come uh, they they come in and they match up match up against another team they get beat again and they look like you know the they look like the worst of the worst you know teams in there so honestly if you ask me both sides there's so much to there's so much to look at and there's also so much to like uh talk about depending on what angle you want to take because right now KP are headed to zone 5 if when they happen when they kick off and how they're going to perform there will tell us if this team is real or not because I've seen them win I've seen them get dominant I've seen them or how they operate in those biggest stages in continental basketball in zone 5 and honestly if you ask me it's just rinse and repeat all over again because you're seeing a situation where you have a team that has the ability to t- to win and to be dominant, but they win they match up against another elite team that have the ability to absorb any punch that they t- that they give. Uh, they just get beat. So, yeah, that's that. I'll I'll be coming in and just talking about these. Uh, I'll just talk about them later. But in the men's finals. Um, before game three, Coach of the Ambo had success in the regular season, uh, especially when they stole a game in Mombasa. So that game ended 72-7 in the regular season when KPA matched up with Equity. I feel like this is important because in game before uh, game one and game two happened in Nairobi. So game three, which happened yesterday, happened in Mombasa. So this is actually pretty important because it will give us, it, it's supposed to like someone give us an insight on how these Mombasa games are going to pan out, despite the fact that uh, KPA won game three, and um, it wasn't that close, but anyway, it is what it is. So he was quoted as saying, Coach Udiam was quoted as saying, yes, this is an important statistic, the, the win that they had, the 72-70 win. Yes, this is an important statistic as it gives us hope and confidence that we we, we can win here, but we are also careful not to be complacent, the conditions are different, and so are the stakes. I believe that the two teams can match up tactically, tactically to win. To so winning comes down to attitude and effort. We are carrying a positive one and remaining focused for on the ultimate prize, while still handling one game at a time. This is the last part of a good run, and we are here to win. It will not be an e- it will not be easy, but I'm urging the players to keep fighting. To the last whistle. So he was quite saying that. So defending champions KPA regained control of the series after blowing out the Equity Dumas 68-44 in game three at the Makande Hall in Mombasa. So it was just an onslaught. These games are not even close. I don't know what happens when KPA just plays in their home court. They just literally blow a team. I saw this uh, happen with the KPA Thunder series uh, around before. And it was just interesting to see, jumping out of, jumping out to a serious series lead before falling, uh, seventy six nine game two in the road, uh, Coach Juku, Coach Juku's team, the KPA team, made the right amends, rallying behind two big performances from Lennox, and Eugene, who scored twenty and fourteen points. So Lennox actually balled out, scored twenty, uh, Eugene fourteen points. KPA's dominance. I mean, KPA just dominating the first quarter, 22-7, on the back of Job Byron's six points to take a comfortable 32-18 lead at the half that eventually ballooned following 16 and 12 performance and 19 and 15 advantage in the second half. So given the Dumas have been in this position before this series, is still much very active as both teams prepare to take the court in game four today. This is Sunday. So in case of a win, Equity will extend their stay. Um, if Equity wins, they can play. A, they can force a game five tomorrow. So yeah, this this series is nothing short of pretty interesting. Considering the fact that one thing people seem to forget, I was even talking this in the Twitter space that we had on Thursday. KP have the biggest win percentage when they play at the KP Makande Gymnasium. I saw this when the Thunder and KP matched matched up or even the other series that even if you look at even last postseason you could see equity versus kpa the equity was up 2-0 on kpa kpa won three straight games okay there was some controversy going in there but they're able to win three games and 
they are yet to like you know lose a game even blow get blown out in their home court so as much as we have um the confidence that equity has i feel like kp have the ability to close out this series today i don't see a situation where equity can be able to like recover from like such a beat down because this was actually so unsighted the game game two it was 69 70 it was decided by one point game one was actually close again so if you ask me i feel like kp there's no way they're going to let themselves like you know get down on points this is a game that they have the ability to win and they can even potentially close out the season today and they can notch a spot in the BAL. And I don't think that they they are in their in their nobody would actually think otherwise. And we just can we just have to wait and see about that. But I pick KP to just close it out because they just have a high win percentage in the Makanda gymnasium. They have the ability to win it all. And I also throw in the same curveball. Okay, let's say KPA wins it. They win the finals, right? They're headed back to the draw to Bal. I'm just waiting and patient to see if they can be able to like succeed in Road to Bal, at least notch uh, first, second, or third place in Road to Bal. Because looking at um, how they performed in Road to Bal last season, last year, it was just at uh, it was an utter piss poor performance, especially considering the fact that they won game one against a team that you know wasn't there yet and they lost four straight and the funny thing and the interesting thing is out of the teams that kpa lost to in the road to ball only one team was able to make it to the bal even in the bal playoffs that was the cape town tigers all the other teams kpa matched up with didn't even make make bl okay i'm not putting the nba academy there the sarcasso 17 year olds are just going to play there but Yurunani, uh course pn jabal club they didn't even make it but you could see kp are just not ready i'm not sure if this year they are ready because this is like the same the same old roster that they still have they haven't made any like additions so i just feel it's just gonna be uh, a rinse or re- rinse and repeat job i'm not sure if they're going to be able to get an easy matchup because last year's last year's matchups were actually pretty simple and easy to like go around but if you look at even the way the BL is set up right now, actually it's just win to get in. So if it's actually pretty difficult for them to be able to get in if they continue with the same trajectory. So even winning this uh, KBF finals is actually the one the peak. This is the peak that they have. And when they go to Road to Bali, it just everything just goes downhill. Even I, I said this and I stressed this, and even I covered this in my videos. Even both the KPA women's side and women's side, the whole KPA franchise, they're just a top tier team in Kenya. But when they leave our borders, what happens is they just, you know, they just become like, you know, a, a bottom, they just become a bottom feeding team. So I'm not sure if this year can change because as much as we want to praise the coaching staff, especially on the women's side, the way they have been blowing out teams. The coach Ojuku is actually pretty much one of the best defensive coaches in Kenya. Only in Kenya, but continental basketball, he concedes the most points. This is a coach that concedes the most points in a FIBA contest, especially if it's continental basketball. So you should put a question mark on the defensive strategies that this coach has when he goes outside because you cannot continue playing the same way. The unfortunate thing is, uh, KPA continue playing the same way. They think that they're matching up against Kenyan teams and the strategies that they use, they think that they are going to be effective and it doesn't, and they're not even effective at all. So honestly, if you ask me, just the rinse and repeat, both of the women, KPA women's side and men's side. So yeah, that's all I gotta say for you guys. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell because I'm just coming up with a video uh right now i'm traveling i'm on the road uh, i'm in ghana right now so this video is just gonna be uh one of those i just do on the road and i'm just keeping up on matches kbf online so uh yeah so if you guys like the video make sure to smash that like button it helps me out a ton and um i'm out peace